as usual, zero. Oh, yeah, you come in. You're, you're going to ask a question. So, just so you know what's happening, here's my young Padawan. That's a Star, Star Wars term. Basically, my apprentice. Um, and I'm going to put him in the deep end in some ways, but I'm going to get my friend Dust from Speaker's Corner to ask a terribly hard question. Daniel is only 14 is yet, is that right? Yeah, 14. So, it's going to be... Are you 14 yet? Not yet, but nearly. Wow, even 13, but nearly 14, right? Okay, and so Dust is going to ask his hardest question. And we're sort of going to do it in a three-way, because we want it to be a learning process. So, Daniel will try to answer this unknown question that we've got no idea what Dust is going to ask. And then I will kind of jump in and try to help out... And we'll just keep going round. I don't, we've never done this before. Let's just see how it goes. So, Dusk, ask your hardest question. Hey, nice to meet you, by the way. It's the first time we've met. And uh, it's great that you're participating in such an endeavour of human debate and thought and interaction. I think that's very noble. And is, in fact, my definition of nobility, by the way, just to clarify that. And my very hard question is, what makes you happy? Belief in God, because... But if, because you have to talk louder this is part of the skill you have to talk you have to like almost like as loud as he or I am go on going to heaven going to heaven yeah what makes you happy when you're alive hang on um, so what makes you happy in creating artwork watching TV um, watching history channels or education what makes you happy in a real everyday sense so what makes me happy is like when I get to sleep and sometimes when I get to take a break from school. Yeah. Like when I take a break from school and then when I come home and I just get to rest. Yeah, that's what makes me happy sometimes. Okay. Do you have any hobbies or hobbies or uh, friends? Yeah, I have friends from school. Ah, do that, does that make you happy? Yeah, they make me happy. Yeah. What do you do with your friends? Uh, I just okay. talk to them. Oh, that's nice. I, like, I sometimes play video games with them too. Ah. Video games, that's wonderful. What type of games are you playing? Like Minecraft. Oh, wow. I, I, yeah, that's not my area, but uh, yeah. Uh, but that's good. So, interacting, playing games, this is happiness. And preserving happiness is important. Obviously, we should have education, and religion, or philosophy, and things like that. But happiness is a very important, uh, critical part of our everyday life. Would you agree with that? Why? Because, Why is happiness important? Because uh, you will get really sad, and being sad is not a very nice emotion. Like, you feel very negative all the time. And if you see most of the world, then, like, some people are not very happy and they just want to do something about it. Yeah. And ha happiness can lead to pretty in internal horror, but also it can explode into external horror as well. So, Un uh, happiness or unhappiness? Unhappiness, of course. Yes. Yeah. Unhappiness. So that's what you were saying, happiness ex explodes into ho external horror, but I think you meant unhappiness. Yeah, yeah. that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, computer games are very important then, valid. I don't play them all the time, though. No, no, no I'm not suggesting you do. I, I, I'm, you go to school, yeah. I'm just saying happiness, even though it may seem irrelevant, and it may seem not to be the greatest achievement a human being can do in a particular 24-hour period, Nevertheless, it can help in uh, in ways that's almost unimaginable. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So, I mean, I think, thank you very much for your question. I think that your question cuts at the root of everything that's important to us, which is happiness, right? And when we're young, that kind of comes naturally in some ways because our needs are very simple. It's like, oh, I just need to play computer games, you know, and you already have friendships within school. Now, what happens after school is a bit of a problem because people don't have a community that keeps us together. So, do you know, I outside, you're a Muslim, I'm a Muslim, we're, we're a special kind of Muslim called the Ahmadi Muslims, right? Yeah. And we're very fortunate that I have your phone number, your dad's phone number, we, we're always in close contact. There's always something happening in our community, lo in the lo local few streets, in the local mosque, in I, the whole country. I think there's one happening down there. What, what's happening at the moment? There could be there's so many things happening that I don't even know. Like what's happening at the moment? I think like there's like a thing for like children to do like. Oh, you mean the Minan Bazaar? Are you talking about that? Yeah. Yeah. So he's talking about 
one of the, the ladies part of subgroup um, is organizing a bazaar like you know like yeah. a little market where they mostly just chat and sell a few things to each other and so there's always something happening I totally forgot about that right yeah. so uh, yeah so I think maybe we can develop the question as to what would you do if you were like say you didn't have school because you've grown up and you've grown out of that community right and then you didn't have Islam to bring people together do you know from your other friends or what you see around any other sort of community system that gets people together uh, I think like online groups because I've seen people just go on like they're online and they're just talking to you and you're organizing plans sometimes okay so that's good that I'm glad that there is some level of community but uh, would you say you know we us older people we make fun I think we make fun of Facebook friends when you've got a million Facebook friends but are they real friends do you know what I mean do you really have a relationship with those people and nowadays what's the more modern thing like what what's an online community discord or something yeah, discord. right okay so are would you say they're friends you hang out with on discord not really yeah so do you see the problem with just only having online friends yes because you don't really you can't you don't know like their real identity because they could see who they want you to perceive them to be but they could be someone else entirely different hmm. and also you don't really go yeah, out it could be a, um, an old man pretending to be a child or something yeah 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 so there's a lot of dangers about it so i'm just kind of developing this really important question of like happiness there's one is how do you find happiness like how do you create a lot of happiness for human beings is community yeah. okay and did you know i don't know if you know about this that um the thing that's causing the most depression and unhappiness is loneliness in london even though there's so many people all around us did you know that not really no. right um and it actually is the thing that uh causes the most health problems unbelievable not having friends actually causes health problems did you know that no right so these are all interesting things and then i suppose the last thing worth talking about it maybe one thing worth talking about what do you think does is like um a sort of direction or a purpose in your life i mean do you think that has an effect on our happiness Let's make it three ways, sort of. Uh, uh, one of the most, just to probably you brought up the point, um, pollution is one of the reason, main reasons why people come ill from cars, vehicles, and uh, chemicals that capitalist puts in your food that you eat. So um, we live in an environment owned by capitalists that pollutes our world, which um, destroys communities and destroys happiness. And uh, you can produce food without capitalism. It's called farming which used to do millions of years, thousands of years, sorry, not millions, um, before um, the cops decided to put pesticides and other horrors of chemical profit that they put before human life. So uh, pollution is a horrific problem and destroying the planet as well. Kind of need a planet to have a community. These are two interlinked um, entities which are important to preserve, both equally and without hesitation and what was the original question sorry what was it second? do you think purpose has any value in making us happy purpose is very important but it's down to the individual for what their purpose because everyone's different and per religion is a purpose but purposing can be found in the most minutiae of things like a computer game as long as it doesn't become the dominant factor like religion if it comes to dominant factor maybe we need to address our need for life and our own personal happiness when one is overriding all other issues to the detriment of the individual and the community itself and what do you think uh, because this is a very grown-up question these are this is definitely a challenge for somebody who's 13 almost 14 um, do you think purpose or having some direction in your life or a reason for your life makes you happy or sad you can say whatever you want yes it does because i've seen like people saying that they're useless and they have no purpose because they don't have like a sense of direction in their life yeah cool and how do you compare your your personal experience do you, do you have a purpose or direction in your life uh i just want to live like a good life and also when i go heaven like okay. that's because like, when i think of it it's like last my entire life because i'll just think of it, it 
it won't like fade away from this life because when when I come back I'm gonna go maybe I might go to heaven yeah and it's gonna be like for my entire life I'm gonna like think about that right yeah. so are you saying I just want to clarify so your main thing in your mind is I want to get to heaven and to do get to get heaven you have to be a good person and so that's your constant thing that you're always thinking about I need to be a good person I need to be a good person and I and that is, is that kind of what you're talking about Yeah, because if you think about worldly purposes you're gonna like you're eventually gonna achieve them or like not achieve them and when you don't achieve them and you might give up but if you do achievement it will be like good for you but like it's not gonna last for like once that's gone it's gone like you, you like you, you could be a millionaire and then you're dead and then what are you going to do with all the money? Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they call that being the richest person in the grave. <laughs> you know, so yeah, so it kind of is meaningless. And are you saying some of your friends or some people you know kind of find, who are not religious or something, they kind of find life meaningless? Or so? Is that something? I think you said something like that. I don't know what it is I you think, said. I think... I, I think I've seen people like just say it. I don't know if they were joking or not though yes yeah and so I was yeah I agree so uh, as society is becoming more atheistic that means people who don't believe in God when you think if you think there's no God and you think everything's an accident then everything becomes pointless including other people because you think you're an accident yourself that's why right so then your life becomes pointless and then people did you know nowadays the main way young men die is suicide I don't, I don't think I knew that, no. Yeah, in the West. So that shows you how depressed people are getting, how pointless life is becoming without a God. Uh, but yeah, so that's how I would answer it. Uh, and uh, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, your um, causality is totally benefits you and your um, what philosophy you're particularly pushing, which is happens to be a religious philosophy. Uh, one of the main reasons people commit suicide is because of austerity, poverty, hopelessness. These are real things. And not to include that in your conversation regarding the very serious and real traumatic event of an individual committing suicide is disingenuous. Not only to that individual, but to the community that we all have to live in sharing. So austerity is real and the pollution is real. War is real. And these things don't bring enlightenment to the individual. Or closeness to God or any of these uh, wonderful facets which a human being is capable of love respect it rips away all this wonder a human being can uh, express and feel and just leaves uh, uh, a hollowness which would and I don't think suicide's right of course obviously uh, but if you're feeling that total disconnection in, in a in a capitalist society, which is what it, capitalism promotes, uh, then that's absolutely horrible. In a secular society, in a uh, secular or uh, agnostic society, it promotes people to feel comfortable in their religion without fear of persecution. That's what a secular society means, which we were talking about earlier. And promoting that means instead of having to live in fear and despair and horror, which obviously leads to not only suicide, but you can, there's another way of committing suicide, which is committing a violent act while killing yourself at the same time. And that's exactly the same thing. And that happens in religions. And so you're doing a suicide in disguise, thinking that, oh yeah, it's going to be better in the afterlife. Are oh, you talking about suicide bombing, isn't it? I am. I didn't want, for some reason, you I didn't can want to, say that. I don't know why I didn't want to say that. Yeah. But uh, I didn't want to specify it to one thing, because suicide, uh, suicide uh, uh, a killing act where you die, it doesn't have to be just bombing, it can be, a, it can transcend to, that's why I didn't want to particularly specify to, but that'd be one of the end conclusions. There are many, of course. And so, yeah, the suicides happen. It's a big words, but I'll just try to The suicides do it. happen, and they do happen in disguise, like people taking drugs. It's like, they don't want to, rightly don't want to commit suicide, so they take drugs and accidentally die of cancer from that drug, etc, etc. So I'm just going to cut off because there's a lot of things to, to learn. Like. Later. You okay, that. cool. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. For talking to you. Sorry. Yeah. A bit too deep. But um, that's kind of my thing. But yeah. life is important to talk about. And as we grow, we grow stronger if we grow collective. And being collective with different ideas and faiths and philosophies is very important. As we respect each other and don't end, end up concluding that violence is a solution to disagreements and our frustrations that we feel inside which is right to feel frustrations but it's not right to 
end up committing a violent act, no matter what God or philosophy or your leader, whatever groups, the socialist or whatever, is telling you to do, if it's indeed doing that, which it shouldn't. All right, so thank you very much for your time. Love to meet you. I hope you find fulfillment in life and that your happiness is just as a, uh, your leaders value your happiness because that is important as discussed thank you very much Ooh. thank you dust as always so okay. du me and dust were so dust is off now but me and dust were having like a one and a half hour chat before he even came uh, oh, about all of these things we did a video but he said a lot of big words and he you know even if you talk for one and a half minutes wherever he was talking for it's really hard to concentrate isn't it yeah, yeah. so I will try to break down one or two come with some of the ideas that he said he was, he, I think he was talking about like uh, our leaders how they should like care for our lives because if they don't care for us we're probably just gonna live like depressing lives I think that's what he was trying to talk about well yeah actually he was kind to trying to suggest that uh, religious leaders take advantage yeah, of I think their that's religion. what I was trying to say yeah. and he said that I hope your leaders uh, take care for you like they actually care about you because like, uh, like I think he was talking about capitalism like leaders and they don't care for us like that's what he's saying like on the main point so I thought maybe that's what he was trying to say I think he was saying a couple of things yeah um, uh, did you do you know the word austerity he was using that word a lot mm, not really it's a big word it's okay it just means so I was saying that People have feel like their lives are pointless and that's causing them to commit suicide. They've got no direction. And he said, no, that's not the real reason. He was saying people are really poor and because they're poor, that's why they're killing themselves. Uh, what do you think about that? How would you answer that? I don't think just because you're poor, you could kill yourself because in the near future, something like very life changing could happen to you, yeah. and you could like not be poor. Don't worry, you're not in, in shock. Don't worry, you can chill there. Yeah, and like you're not in poverty anymore. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll tell you a funny thing. As the countries are getting richer in the West, more suicide is happening. So it shows that it's not being poor that kills or makes you upset, right? Maybe it's not the money. Maybe it's like something like another factor that's. Changed. Yeah, and I think the factor is not having a direction in your life, okay? So this is a bit of a grown-up topic in terms of purpose and stuff. But a psychologist, do you know what psychologists are? I'm learning psychology for my Good. GCSE right, right. Now. Oh, great. So that means, have you ever heard of somebody called Viktor Frankl? He's a very famous psychologist, but maybe they don't talk about it. Yeah. No. Okay, he said you need a purpose in your life, otherwise you'll be depressed. Yeah. Right? So psychologists, not religious people, and many other psychologists. This, this is not an ordinary psychologist, one of the top psychologists. Like, have you heard of Sigmund Freud? No, but I think I've heard of him. Freud, basically, yeah. So, the, amongst the top psychologists, they talk about having a direction in your life, right? Yeah. So, uh, Nietzsche, have you heard of Nietzsche? No. no. He said, basically, if you have a, if you know a way, no. If you know a why, you'll find a way through life, basically. Yeah? yeah, basically, but if you don't have a direction in life, you won't get through anything difficult. If you have a real purpose in your life, then you can go through lots of great difficulties, right? Yeah. And when you don't have a God, for example, and you think everything's random and pointless, then there's no reason for anything. You cannot even make up a... People say, I have my own purpose. You cannot make up your own purpose because that's just like... If, you, if in your mind, on one side, let's say you're an atheist, and you say there is no purpose, and I'm not going to make this longer, I'm going to kind of end it here, right? But if you say in your mind, one part of your mind, you say there's no purpose to life, and then you decide your own purpose, you make up a purpose, you're, in your mind is a bit of a contradiction. Yeah. You're saying there's no purpose, and then you've created your own purpose. But you know that purpose is pointless, because you're going to be dead, and it's all going to be useless. You're going to be, you know, you make a million pounds, and then you'd be dead, what are you going to do with a million pounds? Nothing. Do you know what I mean? You could make the world a better place a little bit, but then all of the whole world would be destroyed, so what's the point? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I and so, but if you know that it's going to develop forever, like in heaven and the next life, and, you know, God will keep continuing your good work, then it makes some sort of sense. I also you know I mean? think, like, maybe it's also, like, the population growing too that's making people commit more suicide. But like the more people there are, they think there's more. They think they're more useless because there's more people to like maybe fulfill what they're trying to do. That's a very interesting idea. So let's take that as sort of a second question. Like, 
uh, are you saying there's too many people? Or? Not really, but like because there's a lot of people, maybe they're like they probably won't care about them because like there's too many people for them to like. He's not gonna do anything. So like maybe they're thinking like they're not. He's not gonna do or she's not gonna do anything significant. And like all these people won't know him or her in like the future when they're dead and all. Okay. Do you feel like I mean I'm trying to think about it. Like, do you? I've never heard of this one, but maybe you're right. Or from a young person's perspective, I think you know what it is. As you're growing up, when you were in primary school, all you knew were the the few kids in your primary school. Yeah. And when you're a baby or a toddler, you only know the that your own, you know, brother and sisters, mum and dad. So as you're growing up, you're realizing there's more and more people. There's all these people on the internet because you wouldn't have thought about that when you were smaller. Sure. Yeah. So your awareness is growing, and a big struggle that teenagers and up to your twenties and thirties, whatever, is that you feel you have to compete with millions of people, and it feels really hard. Is that kind of? billions even yeah and so that is a very interesting problem and causes a lot of stress um, and there's a new crisis there used to be a thing called a midlife crisis ever heard of a midlife crisis yeah. okay it's like when you're halfway through your life people feel like oh what's the point of my life now there's a thing people call quarter life crisis when you're like 25 30 ish whatever right and they're saying oh my gosh my life's so hard I have to compete with so many people I don't know how am I going to have a successful career and I have to compete with because everything's international now yeah yeah like if you're a youtube you have to compete with all the youtubers all over the world and you might say oh that's really hard is that kind of the stress that you're talking about yeah because when you're like competing with many people it feels impossible because like first of all maybe i don't know if it's true but maybe like the government could be like holding like what you really need like the money and like being very hard to like overworked and then get underpaid that's going to make it like very hard to achieve what you're trying to do Okay, and so I'm going to give a quick answer to that very important question, which is actually part of the bigger question of how do you find happiness. Okay, nowadays in the West, the idea of being, uh, how to be successful is how much money you can make. True. Right? And the, the easy way to fix that, that Muslims, and Muslims don't suffer from this so much, okay, as long as the more strong Muslims they are, the less they suffer from this problem of worrying, and because their idea of success is not how much money you can make, but if you can be a good person today, that's it. So in Islam, or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that if you wake up in the morning, do not expect to live until the evening. If you go to sleep in the evening, do not expect to wake up in the morning. So you don't worry about the next day or the next day after that. All you're concerned about are, are you a good person today, right? And if you think of that as your success, you can be successful every single day. You, And that's my experience. I used to sort of panic when I was younger and stress a lot about like how am I going to be successful in life but now all I have to worry about is am I going to be a good person today okay. now you might say oh no but you need to make this much money and stuff yeah, like that because when you achieve that goal you need to find another goal but when you achieve that goal you need to find another goal and another goal but in Islam it does that every day so you don't need to like really like think about what new goals you need to make up Fantastic. It looks like you have the answer already. Like if you have a materialistic or money goal, it will never make you happy because like you say, uh, if once you achieve one, you realize it doesn't really make you happy and then you will want to achieve something bigger. And that's actually what happened. If you think about... I think is that why like, many people are, are converting to Islam. Yes, because um, if you're an atheist or agnostic, you don't have any sort of something that fulfills you. And uh, and they also think if they at least accept a religion and it turns out to be true, it'll be better than being an atheist. Yeah, that's true. And it, be, being a Muslim has a double benefit. Not only do you hopefully go to heaven in the next life, but you create heaven in this life. Because look, look at our lives. We're, maybe you don't realize how lucky you are, but we're always part of a community. There's so many things happening. You're having like me, your uncle, and there's so many uncles. No, I think I realized that because I see many people. Yeah, you, from what you told me, yeah, I think I feel like I'm really lucky now. Yeah. Yeah. So, really good questions. Now, normally I try to keep the videos short, so we'll keep the videos short. We've, you come up, we, we started off really well with a fantastic question of what makes us happy, and then we're kind of finishing off with like how to be successful in our careers and lives and things, and all that kind of stuff. So, we covered a lot of good stuff. Uh, you have any last words, and then we'll cut the video off.
Nah, I don't really have any last words. Cool, that's great, okay.